you want to fit 35 inch tires in your Tacoma, stick around. We're going to show you how to do it. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Tacoma Beast channel where as you know, it's all about the taco. On today's video, we're going to be showing you how to relocate the body mount behind the firewall so you can fit 35 inch tires without any rubbing. Now, before you even consider doing this mod, you're at least going to want to lift your vehicle three inches. Our 2018 Toyota Tacoma TRD Off-Road is currently sitting on 2.5 King shocks all around, along with Deaver Spring Expedition Series Stage 3. For those of you interested in checking out how we install that suspension system on our Tacoma, then make sure to click up here. For the tires, we're currently rocking Goodyear Wranglers MTR with the Kevlar sidewall. These are 315 by 75. The wheels are 16 inch Stealth Custom Series F5. 3.5 backspacing with a negative 25 offset, which gives this truck the awesome stance that it has. Now, up until this point, we have been able to get away with a simple body mount chop. But as you can see, it's an extremely tight fit. Now, I don't recommend you go with a body mount chop with anything bigger than a 35 inch tire. Anything smaller than a 35 inch tire, a body mount chop most likely will work. If you want to stay in the safe zone and not have to deal with the body mount at all, then go the safe route. Body mount relocation kit will do the work. For those of you that don't know what a body mount chop is, as stated in the name, is when you simply chop part of the body mount. The way you do this is by using a plasma cutter. You cut part of the body mount and then you weld on a plate. As you can see, this gives you about an inch of clearance. Now, as I mentioned before, our current tire setup, our tire and wheel setup is extremely tight. It's not until we really abuse the truck and really have the suspension cycle that we feel it rubbing. We are gonna go up in tire size to a true 35 inch tire and the rubbing is really going to get intense. Now moving towards the front of the vehicle, you guys can see we have a high clearance from bumper. There won't be any need to trim or cut up in the front. Take a look at how much clearance we have. Now for those of you that want to keep your stock bumper and want to see how to cut up in the front, then make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will be working on a video specifically for you showing you how to do that. But as I mentioned before on this video, we are going to show you how to relocate the body mount behind the firewall so you can fit your 35 inch tires without any rubbing. With us today is Chris. He's the owner of Alpine Designs and today he's going to be showing us how to install his body mount relocation kit on our 2018 Toyota Tacoma. How's it going, Chris? Going good. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us, Absolutely. man. Do you mind showing us what comes inside the box? Sure. Let's check it out. What we have uh, is two quarter inch thick steel body mount relocation brackets. You'll have four poly bushings, um, some hardware here. This hardware will be for the third gen only. For the second gen Tacomas, you will reuse your factory hardware. Um, and that's explained in our second gen um, directions. Um, but you'll have two quarter inch, or excuse me, half inch by four and a half inch bolts and your install hardware. Now that you guys have seen what comes inside the box, Chris, tell us, man, what's gonna be the first step? First, we're gonna start by pulling off the kick panels. Uh, get the floor mats out of the way and then we'll move on to the upper kick panels that way we can access the hardware and uh, start loosening everything up so we can get the, the body mounts cut off so it's always nice to have a body pry tool this will help you get under the plastics to where you can remove them without damaging anything kind of help all these are stuck on there with just a, a push clip so they should come off nice and easy get that down out of the way floor mat so for this one you do have a small uh, plastic nut that needs to come off here. Spin that off. And this will pull off towards the back of the vehicle. I'm sneak it off. Now that we have all the plastics out of the way, we can fold the carpet back here just on a brake pedal, get that out of our way. So now we're gonna go ahead and pull out these two um, sunken in plastic screws. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky, um, so don't feel too bad if it takes a little while to get them out. Go ahead and sneak this out of here. And under this cap, you will have your body mount hardware. So you can take a little flat head, pop the cap up. And here you'll have your body mount hardware. We'll 
grab this. This is already captured on the third gens. So all you will have to do is put a socket on the bottom and uh, loosen up your hardware. I like to leave it loose when I'm going to cut everything. That way, if any parts fall off of the body mount, it kind of holds it there in place. So we'll get it up on the lift now and get it cutting. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove the body mount bolt. Um, the nut's gonna be a 17 millimeter socket. And break it off. And what I like to do is try to leave the nut just slightly on the body mount bolt. That way when you're cutting the mount off, it doesn't wanna fall off on you. Um, once you're all the way through cutting. So what we're gonna do is use a four by four here. Um, on the ground, you can use a shorter one. But basically what we wanna do is push up on the pinch weld on the bottom of the cab. And that way we can lift it up off of the factory body mount and be able to work the factory wiring harness that runs to the back of the truck to the inside of the frame so we don't cut it when we're um, using the, the cutting wheels. We'll lift this up and get it positioned just on the edge here. It doesn't take much, maybe about three quarters of an inch up. So now that we have the body jacked up off of the factory body mounts, we can pop this clip here and remove the wiring to the back of the frame to where we can cut down and around the mount and pull off the factory mount. So what we're gonna do now is pop this clip here that's holding the factory harness. And that will let it come free and then you can work it back under the frame here. Pop the clip off in the back. Now we can work it to the inside of the frame. So now that we have the wiring harness out of our way, we'll be able to mark around the bracket for our cut lines and we can get in there with, we're gonna start with a saw and then we'll use a little bit of cutting wheel uh, maybe even a little bit of plasma to get this thing off here. Let's see, we'll come and cut just along the edge of the bracket where it starts to lip over on the edge of the frame. And then we'll come around the bottom and cut uh, all the way out, something like that. Now we're gonna go in here and pop off these two clips here. We've already got the, the inner part removed. So we can come in and pop the clips. And pull out the second one here. And fold this back at your way and kind of pin it up on one of the hardware up there. There's a 10 millimeter bolt back in here that you can loosen and that will allow you to push the harness even further back. So when you're cutting, you won't contact the wiring. So what we're gonna do now is use a sawzall to start cutting here at the back of the body mount, similar to where we marked in the front and we'll follow the edge of the frame just along so we're basically removing the whole mount in one piece. We can do that using a carbide tip nine inch skill saw blade or sawzall blade and that will let us cut cleanly through everything without having to worry about a plasma, you know, making sparks um, or making flames or we catch anything on fire. So we'll start here from the back and start cutting. There it is, body mount's loose. We can remove the nut and move the whole body mount out of our way now. We'll push the hard hardware back up into the cab so it's not in a while we're cutting. So now that we have the bulk of the body mount off of the frame, we're able to go in here and do a little bit more of a refined cut closer to the weld that holds the factory body mount onto the side of the frame rail. Um, we'll use a four and a half inch cutoff wheel on a grinder. That way we can sneak up in here close as we can to the weld so that when it comes time to switch over to a sanding disc and remove the weld off the side of the frame, we're not having to sand off all the bulk. We'll just be sanding the weld itself. All right, so now that we've removed the bulk of the body mount itself, you can see how we've come in here with the four and a half inch cutting wheel 
and we've got as close as we can to the weld without cutting into the side of the frame itself. And that will allow us to get in with a chisel and a hammer and actually take this little strip that's still left on the frame. That way when we go to grind, we're only grinding the welds off. That'll speed it up. Um, take a little bit of time initially, but it will speed up the process and give you a nice clean finish. So now that we've scored all the welds and we're able to cut down just so the welds left on the frame, we got one little piece left here. We feel to bend it off. Now you can see our whole perimeter is only welds left. That way when we go back to sand, get it nice and clean and be easy and nice and clean when we're done. So now that we've got all of the bulk of it off, we're gonna go and grind the welds down. For that, we're gonna use a five inch grinding disc. It's a 36 grit. Um, we'll go by and just take off all the welds. So our next step is going to be prepping and painting the body mount brackets. Um, we like to take either acetone or like a denatured alcohol, something that's not going to leave a residue on the bracket itself. Um, get yourself a nice clean shop rag. Um, don't be shy, get it nice and coated with some cleaner. Give them a nice even wipe down inside and out so the paint sticks. Get a nice good prep on it. And give them just a minute to air dry, get all the residue off. We'll come in with some painter's tape and we will tape off just the areas where we'll be welding around the inside and outside. I like to split it evenly so that it's taped off on both sides with just one piece of tape. We'll do that around this whole perimeter here. That way we don't have to grind it back off when we go to weld and we get a nice clean surface for our weld. We'll do them both just like that. So now that we've got everything taped off, we're just gonna give them a few light coats of paint um, inside and out. And that way we'll be ready when we go mount them on the frame. We can slip them right on, we'll pop the tape off. That way we have a nice clean surface for our weld. Um, and it'll keep everything nice and clean. We'll go back and touch it up once we get done welding. So now that we have our brackets all painted up, We'll go ahead and peel the tape off to expose the raw surface that we're going to weld to here in just a few minutes. Peel all this back. You can see we've got a nice clean tape line on both sides. Both our brackets ready to go. And another thing we can do to make it a lot easier, especially if you're doing this by yourself, so you can take your factory hardware and it comes with this little locking ring on here. Um, what you can do is just take a simple piece of tube or even a big socket and hold that over and actually knock these out. And that way, when you take your replacement hardware for your third gen Tacoma, it will actually slide right on there. And you can have either your fabricator or whoever's doing your install um, weld that directly onto your new hardware. That way these tabs will lock it into the floor pan. That way you can tighten your bottom bolt without having to have a second person hold your um, socket on top. So we'll take these over to the, to the weld area, get them welded on, and we'll get these brackets installed on the truck and ready to weld. All right guys, so we've already placed our hardware through the floor of the truck with our wing washers on so we can have it held in place. We're gonna take our top bushing, place it on top of our bracket, slide it over the mounting hardware, place in our second bushing, hold everything in place. And we'll go with our thick washer and then our lock nut. And for now, we're just gonna get it nice and snugged up. That way we can position it properly onto the frame. And it's critical now that you make sure both flanges of the mount itself are positioned up evenly on the frame. And that could take some adjustments with your center pivot, with your hole on the bracket. All right guys, now that we've got the mount positioned on the frame where we want it, we're gonna go ahead and put four nice hot tacks. That way we can remove the hardware and the bushing so they don't get melted uh, when we do our final weld. So one thing that's really important when you go to final weld your bracket on the truck is you wanna verify that you have at least one inch 
from this point here on the cab to the top of your frame rail. That's gonna give you the proper amount of spacing to get you back to your factory settings on all of your body gaps um, and put your cab back in a stock location um, with the frame. Um, so once you verified that, make sure your wiring is not gonna be pinched, pull out your bushings, and then we can go ahead and final weld all the way down the inside and outside of both of the brackets. And then in the top inside of the bracket, we'll final weld everything. Um, then we can go ahead and go to paint. Another thing to really make sure that in between welding the outside and the inside, give it a few minutes, let it cool down so you're not overheating the frame because um, you are welding in such a tight spot. So we'll give it a few minutes and we'll come back, weld up the inside, and then we can prep for paint. All right, now that we left the frame cool from the outside weld, we'll go ahead and weld up the inside fully. All right, so we've already prepped the frame, wiped it down with some acetone so it's nice and clean. We've taped off the, around the wiring where we don't want paint, and we put a piece of cardboard between the bottom of the cab and the top of the body mount. That way we can get nice coverage on the whole side of the frame and the bottom side of the body mount. All right, we'll let that dry up and we'll come back and throw on another coat. All right, guys, we finished up the paint, got everything peeled off. We're ready to start putting everything back together. Um, one key measurement you do wanna check when tightening the bolts um, on your bushings here, from the bottom of the cab to the bottom of the supplied thick washer, you wanna measure about inch and five eighths. So once we've done that, we verify it's all good. We can go back in, tighten the 12 millimeter bolt back into the wiring harness and put that back to its factory location pull the mud guard down and replace the clips and we're all set. We can throw the tires back on and get her back on the road. Chris just finished installing his Alpine Design body mount kit on our 2018 Toyota Tacoma. Just looking in there right now, I can already see tons of clearance. Just take a look at the difference here. This is the stock body mount. Look at how big it is. And this is the Alpine Design body mount kit that we just finished installing on our truck. It's a massive difference. If you look on the screen right now, you can see how tight it was with the stock body mount. Now take a look at how much clearance we have with the new upgraded Alpine Design body mount kit. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like it down below. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to do so, and I'll see you guys in the next video.